FX's Shogun just won a record-breaking 18 Emmy Awards in one night. David, did this show deserve all the awards, or was it for diversity's sake? I guess you could say that Game of Thrones was dethroned. Let's run the clip! And the Emmy goes to... Shogun. For its first eligible year, Shogun has received 25 nominations. Boom! There you have it, Andrew. Shogun, aka Shogun, won 18 Emmys. It, you know, took Game of Thrones, has the record for 59 for the series, but they only got 13 in a single season. This one got 18. And you know what's even more noteworthy, Andrew? Especially if you're Asian, Anna Sawai who played Mariko Sama, used to be in a hip-hop, J-pop group. Okay, Dave, I don't really know why that's relevant, but you seem to be a fan, so we're going to play the clips. But anyways, guys, big news, because this is an Asian show, Asian actors, spoken in an Asian language, Japanese obviously, taking place in a period of history in Japan. Now, the show is based off of a book, from a white guy who spent time in Japan. But the white story was based off some loose recounting of actually a real story, right? right. So so I guess basically we made a video about how good we thought the show was uh, several months ago. Now the show has finished. Uh, kind of goes on. A, you guys let us know in the comments down below what you thought of the entire season. But uh, yeah, 18 Emmys. Best drama to best directing, sound mixing to best uh, period costumes all the way to best lead actress, Anna Sawai, best lead actor. Hiro Hiroyuki Sonata and best guest actor. So Yabu Yabushige got robbed though. He did, he did, he did. So, I mean, it won all the awards, David. Winning Emmys, obviously it's being recognized by the Emmy Right. Academy. What does it mean? Does it mean anything? And a lot of people are debating it both internally within the Asian community and in the television community. Right, because also we saw Beef a couple years ago win a bunch of Emmys as well. Oh, that's a good point. Right, Beef won a lot of Emmys and Beef... But now between Beef and Shogun in the past few years, that's a pretty good run. Right. Well, Asians also swept the Oscars two years ago as well. Oh. So some people are saying, is it like, basically there's a lot of debate. Was this a diversity win? Was Shogun just literally the best show this year? Because obviously it's a show that takes place, Andrew, far outside of the Anglosphere or even like Western mythology, period. Right. So obviously it's not even taking place in English. I'd say about what, 60% of the show is in Japanese. So it's almost like, how can Western audiences embrace it? Is it legit or is it not legit and it's DEI? Or are people really that open-minded in 2024? Well, I guess we should discuss it because it seems like Asian people or Asian faces are making a lot of good content lately. But right. maybe we're getting a boost. Who knows? Anyways, guys, we're going to talk about it. Please hit that like button. Check out other episodes of the Hot Pop Boys. Check out Smala Sauce. At smallasauce.com. Let's just take a look at some of the discussions. Point number one, Andrew. Somebody said, why do the Emmys allow all these premium shows, whether they're on HBO or Hulu or whatever, you know, service it is. These shows are super expensive. Why do they allow them to like sweep the awards? Because Game of Thrones and um, Shogun are more like movie tier. So they're saying, how could a regular show ever compete with that? Oh, so you're saying it's bad. They're saying it's bad for TV. It's unfair for TV shows. Yeah, I guess it's like peep because they're so paywalled that most people didn't get a chance to watch those shows. Oh, right, right, because they're not on like primetime television. Well, I don't know. I mean, the landscape is just changing. I mean, I don't really think that's uh, that big of a deal because just a lot of people have different streaming services. A lot of people don't have their cable TV anymore, so. But a lot of people are subscribed to so many streaming services, it's almost equal to a cable bill. Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, there's way more content out there. So, yes, winning these awards, in a way, is only going to get more competitive in years to come because there's so much more content out there. Right. Uh, other people were just talking about what a great show it was, but a lot of people were talking about what type of Americans like this show and what type of Americans are pretending to like this show and what type of Americans would outright be like, I'm not going to watch that. Well, obviously, I think there's a portion of Americans who have no interest watching the show. Um, but I think the ones who are open to it, they would have seen kind of the world it brought them into. I think also a show that's so new, 
and different than all the other shows at the time does have an advantage. Kind of like everything, everywhere, all at once, David. Like that movie was so different. It was very so, metaverse-like, right? It was so nutty, to be honest. But it was still good. But I think the nuttiness kind of gives it, puts it in its own lane. And therefore, people were like, oh, we got to give it awards. It's just so different and groundbreaking. Right. To be fair, Shogun came out in 1975. And it was right. a remake of the Shogun from 1975. So some of the people who loved uh, Mifune in the original one might watch, may have watched this, this one. This was not for the 1975 crowd, I'm assuming. Yeah. I think only a fraction of the 1975 crowd loved this version, this modern, updated, way more Japanese version, right? right. Um, of course, people are debating whether or not, because, like, it is true that uh, Hiroki winning and Anna Sawai winning, some of the news outlets were saying, oh, this is the first Asian American to ever win Best Actor or Best Actress. Some people were like, DEI, DEI. Uh, I, yeah, I mean, I don't... I think there's a slight boost just because of how deeply it took you into that culture. And I think it just told the story so well. Like, You're talking I'm about not, feudal Japan. Yeah, I'm a person who's not familiar with the 1975 version, okay? So when I'm learning about the Portuguese and the British fighting over Japan and, oh my gosh, what Japan meant at that time and how people perceive this people and then the different languages in the show right. and how everybody's speaking their own language and actually English being spoken is really not... It's not, it's not even well, it's the Well, actually, they're language. supposed to be speaking Portuguese at that time, actually. Yeah. But they just switched it to English. Right. So I just think it's like kind of the world that they took you into. It just took so much work and was executed so well. So I guess, uh, yeah, but maybe not everybody liked the story because it kind of what made certain white groups look bad. I would say that it was pretty fair in its macro representation. I will say this, and we're going to get to it later. The white guy does look like he's got uh, the biggest piece of equipment on him in terms of masculinity or mm. testosterone uh point number five somebody said we're so sick of this race discussion i just can't stand i like the show but i don't like it being brought up that it's the first asian show that won in x amount mm. of years mm. or now some people are saying oh man it's the first japanese actress and ja you know what i mean because like maybe ali wong one year but then she's not japanese so now people got to give him award for like this milestone so i guess some people in the western world are like they don't know how to perceive it, right? Right, right, right. Uh, I saw this criticism. I mean, because there's always complaints about the show. Even this is from the YouTube comment section from our previous video a few months ago where it said people will complain about a show based in Japan about Japan with Japanese actors speak in Japanese. How can you guys be satisfied with anything? And this was because, David, there's certain aspects of the story, which are based off of the original book, that still kind of put the white guy in the cool position right here. it was it was a little bit controversial on like more like asian male circles i yeah. guess where people are like wait why does he got the big old well, thing on him well, and David, pleases David. all the geishas and anna so why oh, and warrior no. ladies and everybody's yeah. looking at how good he looks let me let me ask you because you really love the show you're a big fan of the show uh i mean i like the show too but i feel like we gotta ask you because some people in the comments, I'm not saying we have to listen to the comment section, but this person's like, oh, well, if you watched the whole season, you would have seen that all the white male, Asian female tropes are there. The white guy is the savior, the hero, the love interest. While he's the, Asian, the buffest guy too. Yeah. While the Asian men are seen as the toxic grumpy guys, the toxic husband, right? Obviously right. of uh, Anna Sawai and the Asian guys who are shirtless are not that buff. Uh, I just feel like that the Asian guys aren't seen in a positive enough light compared to the white guy. I would agree with them, but I would also point out that the visual representation in turn is going to be the last thing that breaks. I will say this. He never disparages Asian men verbally, the, mm. the white character right, or the British character or whatever he's playing. But I'm saying like in the past he would have, but everything it like comes in baby steps where yes, he still got to be easily the most sexualized character i don't think he's obviously the most but if you had to analyze it and rank it out he is the most sexualized character i mean that's probably accurate to the book yeah and it's probably accurate to like so uh hiroki sonata right he's very japanese he's like one of the probably top five stars in japan he still got to work within the Western system to get this done. I mean, the producers are still Western. The original, original source material is still Western. So I almost think like he shape-shifted it as much as he could 
while still pleasing both groups. And obviously the Emmy committee is like rewarding him for doing so because otherwise the producers had to take such a big risk, right? And uh, if you know about internal circles within Hollywood or like television, Andrew, a lot of people were like, a lot of people did not know how something from the East was going to do with heavy, heavy investment. Mm. There wasn't anime right. or manga, right? Right. Like, or CGI. Like, so this is like really based. There's no fantasy elements. Nobody's flying mm -hmm. a dragon. Nobody's breathing right. fire. Like basically people get blown up. I mean, it looks a little bit more glamorous, but people just get blown up and killed the way a regular person would. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Where I'm like, Saying, I guess what I'm saying is, if you understand of how actually the mechanics and oftentimes the harsh reality of the mechanics of progress works, then Shogun is progress. Right. So, so you would admit it's not a perfect show from an Asian male masculinity standpoint of being like, oh, there could have been like even a buffer Asian guy in that show. For sure, for sure. But it, it was almost like he pushed it for me understanding the game as, uh, as much as I do or IQ I have for it mapping for it he pushed it as far as he could okay yeah i mean i i obviously yeah do i think show. the john wick movies might even do a better job but then some people are mad about you know how many asian guys get killed in john wick too but there's cool asian male characters in john wick oh. like donnie yen and hiroki sonata himself too right and, yeah. and keanu's part asian himself yeah no i mean i i think there's something for everybody i mean i think there's warrior that show which is not going continuing anymore but a lot of people stand by warrior as far as asian male representation beef which is asian american male representation and then there's i mean i think shogun from a historical standpoint which you're going to learn a lot about history through that show as well um but yeah i mean sure there's a white protagonist in the story is it does that automatically make it, does that, does that like nullify it? You know what I mean? Right, right, right. I mean, like I said, to me, it was my favorite show that I've seen since The Wire because it taught me a lot of things. And also just, uh, you know, looking up Japanese feudalistic history and the creation of the Tokugawa Shogun after watching right. Shogun, I was like, oh yeah, this is pretty so, relevant. So, like, so and it's cool of, because it's like, it just doesn't, it shows a white guy in Asia and the Asians generally are pretty cool. Right. Yeah, you're right. They're not on a sexual side. I will say I agree. That side was a little bit lacking. But in terms of coolness, even like the traders and the bad guys are still cool. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, I mean, guys, I think that, that if it inspired you to learn something and to look up more and there's still strong, badass Asian guys in that show, even if the white guy gets with the Asian girl, it's not in that way that you think, but it... On paper, that's what happened. I will say this, and I, Andrew, I got to get your opinion on this. We do have a friend. I'm not going to say who he is. He's Asian-American, and he's kind of known in the game. And he goes, yeah, that story was just way too ancient Asia for me. I, I need more stories about Asian America. And I remember thinking in my head, I was like, bro, we are still Asian. Like, this is still Asian history. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's still Asia. It's not about, like, it's not directly addressing, like, growing up in the 80s or 90s yeah. or 2000s. Well, I don't it was know, like, a great period piece actually i mean there's a lot of like chinese period shows to be honest in movies that to be honest even as a chinese person i'm not as into because i just think that shogun made it look cooler i don't know yeah that's, then most that's, 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 and, yeah that's the truth so anyways guys let us know in the comments down below what are we missing are there other great asian shows maybe that are not produced in the west that would not be up for emmys but let us know and what you, let us know what you thought about this show does the Asian male representation affect your opinion or not? All right, you guys, let us know what you think in the comments section below. By the way, I think Anna Sawai dated Sung Kang for a long time. Anyway, guys, until next time, we out. Peace. Peace.